I'd finally arrived in the harsh Australian outback. I drove on through the night to beat the searing heat. Not such a good move. In the cool of the night, I hit three kamikaze kangaroos, one taking out a headlight. Without my homemade bumper bar, I would have been stranded, alone in this unforgiving landscape. I took a side trip to visit the last camp of the ill-fated 1861 Burke and Wills expedition. Camp number 119 was the last stop Burke, Wills, King and Grey took before embarking on the return journey to Melbourne. All perished, with the exception of King, who befriended a local Aboriginal tribe. The Burke and Wills camp had a lasting effect on me. I pulled over to the roadside, overtaken with a strange desire to wear khaki. When I put on my new Akubra hat, it was like I'd been possessed by the explorer spirit. As I looked into the setting sun, a voice on the wind whispered, You will call thyself Overlander. Go forth and film thy land. I drove on towards the Gulf of Carpentaria to visit Corumba on the mouth of the Normanton River. There I interviewed Jason Jesse, a local policeman and keen fisherman. I'm one of the local policemen in town. A lot of the times uh, there's only one of us in the division. The worst part about the job would be the isolation, especially when you're here by yourself, having to go to jobs on your own, you know, really not knowing what to expect. We get about uh, 25,000 tourists come to Crumber every year. Mostly for the fishing. They all squeeze themselves into six months of the year. The other six months of the year, over the wet season, can only be 100 people in town. It's nice and quiet then. The best way to describe the lifestyle up here is that it's pretty laid back. It's hard to find a local that owns a pair of shoes or actually wears them. And if they do own a pair of shoes, they hide them in a cupboard. Everyone just likes to get around. It's pretty casual. Everyone knows everyone on a first name basis. I really can't think of two people in town that don't like each other. Yeah, it's just that sort of place. Everyone knows everybody, everyone likes everybody, and we all get on together. It's a good place to let your kids grow up. We don't have the problems here in Crumble with crime that they have in other places, so not too much uh, drama in letting your kids ride their push bike down the street on their own. And uh, apart from all that, the weather's fantastic and, and we love the fishing. It's good to be able to get out in the boat at Corumba. You can still get uh, far enough up the river that you've got the whole place to yourself. The Norman River is renowned as a good barramundi river and uh, that's what I enjoy, getting out catching barramundi on lures in, in the creeks and, and on the rock bars. At certain times of the year, uh, people come from all over Australia and, and all over the world to Corumba to catch barramundi. It's uh, one of Australia's most sought after sports fish. They've got all these endearing qualities, they jump out of the water, they fight hard, they throw the lures, which makes them a very exciting uh, fish to target. By this time of year, uh, end of October, it's, it's pretty hot. We've got the build up to the wet. People seem to get a little bit stir crazy around the place, it's waiting for the first rain. Yeah, some, the temperatures this time of year can, can range up to 40 degrees during the day. Uh, with high humidity, 75 or 80 percent humidity, which makes it pretty oppressive. Not the sort of weather you want to be digging a hole in the backyard in anyway. <laughs>